I've got 10 incredible tools to help you manage your time like a wizard. This is part two of Time Tools. If you have not seen part one, the link is above. Stay tuned. What's going on guys? Richard Rosa with the Personal Development Channel. This is part two of Time Tools. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. And if at any point you like what you're seeing, give it a little like. Let's get straight into this for part two and hit some more tools. Number eight from part one was make fewer decisions about the things that aren't important. I'm going to start with tool number nine today. Eliminate inefficient communication. Spend less time on email by putting more information in your emails. Cut down the back and forth bullshit. Email is often considered the bane of productivity habits. Many people spend their work day with their email inbox clearly visible, responding to every notification as it comes in. Comment below, guys, if you're one of these people that does this and what kind of tips could you got for anybody else or in the community that could help them get away from this. As I said in the deep work section in part one, there's a lot of value in reducing these kinds of distraction. One way to do that is simply by minimizing your inbox and checking at specific intervals. Another is to become more efficient in your email communications to begin with. In other words, send better emails. Have you ever tried to schedule a meeting, then sent another five emails back and forth to set a specific time and a place, agenda, well, what if you could reduce the number of emails it takes to, to schedule simple meetings or make each email more precise so there's less back and forth before you actually get to the real work? Highly productive people reduce the number of emails they send by making each mail clearer and more valuable. That might mean each email takes a few more minutes to write, but also ultimately saves you time. If you need to schedule a meeting with an employee, don't just send them an email like, hi, this is Richard, I wanted to meet so we could talk about whatever it is. When's a good time for you? Kind regards, Richard. An email like that gets the job done, but it's going to be a lot of back and forth, lots of work and lots of time. You're actually meeting going to wind up being pretty inefficient as you'll need to go through agendas in person and the other person won't have time to think so you end up just having quite an unproductive meeting however what you could do is it could be hi Richard I wanted to meet so we could talk about excellent project wanted to talk about this on the agenda this on the agenda and this on the agenda Oops, I'm not giving you anything specific I took a look at your calendar and it seems like we're both free at Tuesday at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Let me know what works best for you and feel free to book my calendar. Kind regards. Now, this email is a little longer, takes a little bit more thought to write, but it's also much more efficient. It will take between zero and two more emails to get you set up with this meeting. So, you can use a third party scheduler. There are plenty available these days. From scheduling meetings to giving out assignments or asking questions, make your emails as precise as possible. This takes a little bit of work, but ultimately it's going to save you more time and cuts down unnecessary work. Number 10, find repeatable shortcuts. Automate your tasks. What do you do over and over? Look for tech that can automate those tasks if you find yourself doing the same things over and over. Look for ways to do those things faster. If you've got any great tools that you have that you're using that automate some of those tasks that you have to do over and over again, please share in the comments below for everybody else. Plus, I'm happy to learn and see if there's anything that I've not seen or come across. So I would appreciate that. This can be as simple as learning common keyboard shortcuts or involve automating entire sections of your business or your personal life. Here are a few potential examples of finding shortcuts. 
Put together standard operating procedures for common tasks so you can quickly follow checklists instead of working from scratch. Learn simple keyboard shortcuts that come up often. I like to use the Alt and Tab for switching to tabs quickly. Um, increase your typing speed. It seems so obvious, but the difference between 60 and 90 words per minute is huge. It's a game changer. There's a thing called Type Eraser. It's very addictive. Have a go. Use technology to take care of repetitive tasks. Repetitive tasks are great candidates for shortcuts, delegation or automation. Knocking them off your schedule can save you a shitload of time and energy. Okay, tool number 11. Learn from successes as well as mistakes. Make efficient processes more efficient. One of the challenges of highly productive people is ensuring that fast work is also good work. When you're working quickly, you open yourself up to making mistakes. Highly productive people tackle that risk by learning and improving at every possible moment so that producing good work becomes intuitive. Learning from mistakes is obvious, although of course valuable. When something goes wrong, analyzing the mistakes and looking for ways to prevent them is a massively valuable learning experience. As important though, and much less common, is learning from successes. When something goes well, why? When you have a success, it can be tempting to pop the champagne and start celebrating. And don't get me wrong, it's good to celebrate your successes, but successes deserve every bit as much scrutiny as failures. Highly productive people make the most of successes by figuring out how to repeat them. What went well? Why did it go well? What should you take from this experience and use again? Use these elements of a successful project that weren't as effective and then they can be eliminated. Asking these questions helps you go from one success to repeated successes. It also helps you understand your successes on a more intuitive level, which saves you time whenever you sit down to work on a new project. Okay, number 12, plan for when things go wrong. Make an if-then plan for when things go wrong before they ever go wrong. It happens to everyone. You have big plans for today. It's going to be your most productive day yet, but then little fires start popping up and demanding your attention. Whether your furnace breaks and you need to call a repairman at the last minute, meetings pop up, you forgot something in your schedule, you forgot to take the kids to school, sometimes things just go tits up. Highly productive people acknowledge the planning fallacy, the fact that everyone underestimates how long it will take to finish tasks. Research on the planning fallacy shows that a lot of the reason for this misestimation is that we forget to take into account tasks or responsibilities that aren't yet on our calendars. Have you ever tried to schedule a meeting and thought, let's do this next week? Next week looks more open, but then next week comes around and it's just as busy as always. Highly productive people are better at realizing that next week only seems open because you haven't scheduled it yet. By planning for interruptions and creating contingency plans, highly productive people can adapt quickly when unplanned problems present themselves. 13. Work before you get motivated or inspired. Motivation comes after productivity, not before. Start by working to get inspired. A lot of people looking to get more productive habits talk about needing to get inspired or motivated. Highly productive people instead focus on just getting started. Whether they're motivated or not, they just get going. In her classic book, Bird by Bird, author Anne Lamott gives this advice to aspiring writers. Look through a one inch picture frame. And what does this mean, you might be asking? It means that you don't need to tackle everything at once. When you are having trouble getting motivated, it's often because you're looking at the massive scope of a project. That's intimidating. It's hard to get started when faced with the enormity of a task. Lamotte tells writers not to worry about inspiration or motivation. Just start writing the smallest possible way, even if you need to start by describing your own shoes. Getting words, any words, on the page is the first step. The same applies to your work, even if you're not a writer. If you feel overwhelmed or find yourself procrastinating, look through a one-inch picture frame. Start doing something like breaking the task into smaller chunks 
and you'll find it easier to keep going. Taking action is what leads to motivation, which in turn leads to more action. Highly productive people don't wait for motivation, guys. They just start and then motivation follows. Number 14, don't multitask. Yep, that's what I said. Checking emails or social media counts as multitasking as well. With so many distractions in our surroundings, it's easy to be tempted to fall into the trap of multitasking. The research on multitasking is clear. People are bad at it. The reason is that multitasking is actually misnamed. When you try to multitask, you aren't actually doing two things at once. You're rapidly switching your focus between two things. Think about it. Every time you switch, you have to refocus on the new task because it takes a few minutes to get up to speed on another task. These switching costs make multitasking extremely inefficient. Are there times where multitasking is okay? Probably, yeah. If you're cleaning your apartment while listening to an audio book or some music, you're probably okay because you're not having to use the same two thinking modes, the same mental resources at once. But if you're writing an email while trying to follow the words in a podcast, both tasks are competing for your language resources. Your work will slow down and quality will suffer. It also zaps your energy and makes your brain more tired, which means that you will slow yourself down on future tasks too. But how do you stop multitasking? Avoiding multitasking can be as simple as closing the tab with your email and muting your phone, email or text notifications. In most jobs, waiting an extra half an hour to respond to an email won't be the end of the world. Eliminating multitasking is one of the most productive habits you can develop. Number 15, fill the tank, recharge yourself. One of my favorite ones that people forget. Your energy is as important as your time for productivity. Productivity, tactics, the emails, the templates, and prioritization are valuable methods of improving your productivity. But they won't help you if you aren't taking care of yourself. If you aren't thinking straight or have trouble focusing, take a look at your personal habits. I know that four or five hours sleep just isn't enough for me. I really need about six hours and missing out on sleep affects my productivity for the following day and sometimes more. It's important, sleep, exercise, eat well, get outside and soak up some sunshine. Taking care of your healthy habits is a crucial part of efficient work habits. Number 16, sharpen the ax. Time spent getting better at tasks saves time on those tasks in the future. Sharpen the ax. There's a famous quote attributed to Abraham Lincoln that goes, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first full sharpening the ax. Now whether Lincoln actually said this is to be debated, but the lesson behind it is important. If you want to be productive, you need to make sure you stay sharp. In a modern Example, you've got Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger attribute much of their success to reading. By spending a lot of time reading, becoming more knowledgeable and getting better at their trade, they're able to make faster and more accurate decisions. Munger once said, neither Warren nor I is smart enough to make the decision with no time to think. We make actual decisions very rapidly, But that's because we've spent so much time preparing ourselves by quietly sitting and reading and thinking. Dedicate time to improving and you'll be able to respond more efficiently to a variety of situations. That example is the same as sharpen your axe. 17. Manage your energy, not just time. Time management is a huge part of productivity. Many of the productivity habits I've talked about could genuinely help you manage your time more effectively. But just as important and often overlooked is energy management. Very similar to one I talked about a minute ago. If you're exhausted and you can barely think, it doesn't matter how many hours are left in the day. You won't be able to use them productively. This is the logic of tackling different tasks early in the day by using your peak hours efficiently. You can get more done in less time before you get tired. Jason Fried, founder and CEO of Basecamp, says that while people often say there's not enough time, remember that you'll always have less attention than time. Highly productive people know 
that it isn't enough to have time to do things. Managing your energy to ensure that you tackle the most tasks, intense tasks, while you have the energy to handle them is an important trick to becoming productive. We're coming up to the end now. I've got my last tool to give you, but then I've also got one bonus one at the end. Number 18, get better at saying no. So do you say no a lot or not? Maybe you don't. It's so tempting to say yes all the time. New projects and opportunities crop up all the time. It's easy to get excited by the possibilities and then wind up with too many commitments. Saying no is hard. It means consciously setting things aside so that you have the time to work on your most important priorities. So if you find yourself saying yes all the time, think about it, guys. I've been in the situation myself personally where I say yes and then I look at my workload and my stack and that's I'm not just talking about work, I'm talking about my personal life as well. Things easily stack up if you keep saying yes. You need to manage your time effectively. Over part one and two, I have shared 18 tools and hacks for managing your time more efficiently and I have referred to highly productive people a lot. Highly productive people can seem like magicians or robots. Most of the time, the most efficient people you meet have managed to find ways to overcome procrastination and other challenges. The most efficient people aren't necessarily brilliant or better. They've just found strategies to beat procrastination. And finally, my ultimate bonus tip, know when to ask for help. Drop your bullshit ego Smart people ask for help. Productive people admit when they don't know something. Ask for help instead of trying to struggle through something on your own. It's going to save yourself shitloads of time and frustration. Please take this advice from me, as I have been one of those guys that didn't always want to take advice or didn't seek it out. I think I'd be, oh, I'll be a hero. I could come up with it myself. But actually, it's just easier to go and ask for help sometimes. That was my ultimate top tip, one that always gets missed out. It's now challenge time, nice simple one. Take at least one of the tools I have gone through in part one and today's part two, implement it and give it a go. Commit to using the tool for at least 30 days and measure your productivity to see if it works for you. But remember what I said at the beginning in part one, this is almost like a toolkit for you guys. And what you decide to do with it is up to you. But there's 18 tools there, was 19 actually. Um, but you use what works for you. I'm not saying all of this is gonna work for you. It might be one thing, but even if one of these things works for you, then it's gonna be something that hopefully can make a difference in your work environment or in your personal life. But it's up to you. It's almost, think of it like going to a restaurant, you look at the menu, what do you want? I want this. Does it taste good? Does it work for you or not? If it does, then great. Have it again, use it again. If it doesn't, then you don't have to. Share your challenge experience with us in the YouTube comments or tag us on Instagram using at Rosa Mindset. I hope that you have enjoyed these episodes on managing your time. If you did like it, then please give it a like. Any comments are welcome, good or bad. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you think this could help somebody else, then please share with others. And finally, come and join us on our community, uh, on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about me, go over to our website, rosamindset.com. This has been Richard Rosa. Stay safe and keep active.